Good morning. It is Thursday, uh, January 12th. And we are here to talk about um, The Bad Batch. The most recent episode of The Bad Batch. Which I was watching last night as I was recording, um, I guess we'll call it B roll for um, an upcoming episode of Exploring Hyperspace Land, which if you want to find out more details, go to multipleworldproductions.com slash EHL, and that'll be in the description as well. Um, but we're going to be doing Star Wars Battlefront, the 2004 game, um, in the near future. Um, in a few weeks, actually. So, the video game one is going to have a video component um, on the YouTube of the episode where you can watch it to follow along. So I was recording the, the B-roll for that, um, which was a lot of going through. Because I, I was doing Galactic Conquest mode because it lets you play a lot of the world. It gets you through most of the maps, uh, with the exception of if you play well. The both map, or I think there's only one Hoth map in that game, uh, and one Endor map. Um, So, and Yavin, I think, has, Yavin has two, but, um, yeah, there's, you know, it gets you through most of them, except for whatever's on your team, um, so, like, the Rebels keep Yavin, the Empire keeps, uh, Endor, so you have to play through the rest, and, uh, the other maps and the thing, um, but anyway, that's not what we're here for, um, we're here to talk about the Bad Batch, um, episode three of the uh, the current season, which is interesting because I see where they're going with this, or rather, I, I like the idea of where they're going with this, even if the first episode leaves a little to be the desired about where they're going with this. I like the idea of going into using Commander Cody, because we, we as an audience know Commander Cody, because he's the one who was with Obi-Wan on Utapau in Episode 3. So seeing what happened to him after Order 66 is an interesting thing, because he and Obi-Wan were friends, and, you know, if they're friends, then how does everything that happened impact him? And, and this is something where like, we've had a lot of clones reacting to, like, well, no, I'm not just going to follow this order for the sake of following the order, like, I'm not gonna get some murder an innocent person just for the sake of it, or like in this episode, we negotiated peace, I'm not going to kill her just because you said to, and then Crosshair eventually kills her, but it's a, it's an interesting thing that they're really getting into, um, and I think having Crosshair be the one who is not impacted by the by the conditioning chip or whatever that thing is called, having him be the one that's not impacted by it, but still choosing to go along with the Empire, is is a great and, and being the, the really the only clone we've seen so far who's just kind of blindly following the Empire's orders and not being like, but wait, we're here to protect peace, not to or keep the peace, not to um, what's it called, not to. Uh, well, I don't over here not to, um, just, you know, kill people, you know, and, and, and institute fear. But that's not our job. So, I, I think it's an interesting idea to use Commander Cody to explore this more in depth, because we, the audience, know who he is, and we get these scenes of him with, with Crosshair as they're going through and being, and, and, and having the philosophical conversation over just following orders versus questioning what the Empire is doing. Um, and then for him to go AWOL. I think that what we need is we need for Cody to... I, I think what we need is we need for the clones to have the moment of reckoning around Order 66. Because I, I think the problem is we've had characters have their inhibitor chips removed. Um, but they're all characters who haven't killed a Jedi. Um, we, we have, like, you know, the Bad Badge all had their chips removed, Rex had his chip removed, um, we've had all of these characters have their chips removed, but none of them have actually killed a Jedi. Like, Rex 
never actually killed anyone. He tried to kill Ahsoka, but um, they stopped him from doing that before, um, what's it called, before they got into, uh, before, you know, he was able to, well, he probably couldn't have killed her by himself, but, you know, before they could get to that point, he did stop them. So, they, they did take the inhibitor chip out. Um, I want to see what happens when a clone has the inhibitor chip removed who had killed a Jedi, or in the case of Cody, thought they killed a Jedi. And not just any Jedi, where it's like, all right, well, that, they were a Jedi. I mean, look, I shouldn't have done that, and that was wrong, and, and I caused this, and I have to reckon with that. But Cody thinks he killed Obi-Wan. Because the galaxy at large thinks Obi-Wan is dead. We basically have two different times that the, the galaxy... Well, I don't know if the galaxy at large would, would acknowledge it. But they would not like... I, I guess for the clones, they would assume he died on Utapau. Because um, he gets shot down while riding that lizard thing. And then he, he falls into the, into the river. But he survives that. But presumably, the... The, the the clones think he's dead there. Meanwhile, on the other side of the galaxy, you know, we have the Empire, who thinks, what the fuck is this guy doing in this slow-ass truck? Uh, on the other side of it, we have the Empire, who is like, okay, Obi-Wan's definitely still out there, but they're not going to tell the clones that. They're not gonna, because they're, they're not really, you know, in that situation where they're going to be talking to the clones and being like, go kill Obi-Wan, because it's like, if he fucked up Vader at the height of Vader's power, then he's, he's going to be an issue. He'll be an issue um, for, for, a, for a long time to come. Now, I want to see Cody, who thinks he killed Obi-Wan, reckon with that. I want to see Cody have to sit there and be like, oh my god, I killed a f- like my friend. Like, and have to reckon with that. And then on one hand, make amends for it, but on the other hand, kind of move past it. I think that's kind of where we're going, because the episode ends with Cody going AWOL, and with with Cody no longer on the board and him being out there somewhere doing God knows what, it does open up the avenue for him to be like, okay, well, I gotta be free of the Empire, because the Empire is doing this heinous stuff. And I think that to an extent, too, what we're gonna get to is this point where the, um... The inhibitor chip is going to... I think the the big reveal about the inhibitor chip this season is going to be that it really is only an Order 66 thing. It's not a uh, a full-blown, like... um, What's it called thing? It's not a full-blown... Every action that the... um, What's it called? That the clone takes are modified by the inhibitor chip. As evidenced by the fact that they just won't follow orders now. They're like, no, we're not fucking doing this. Like... Like, this episode had another great example of that, where it's like, look, we, you know, we we went to, um, what's it called? We went to, uh, we, we, um, what's the one for here? We went to, uh, like, you know, we, 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 we brokered this peace deal with the Separatist, and we went from there. And I think the part of the thing that's really waking him up is that it's like, and I think that's a lot of this, is waking up the clones from their conditioning. One of the things that's really waking up um, Cody, in this case, is who is, like, what's going on with with the conflict that my life has been devoted to? Like, her having that conversation where she's like, look, we introduced separatists and, you know... Republic, members of the Republic alike, we introduced this bipartisan bill that would end the conflict. And it's like, look, we are here to end this conflict. We do not want to have this war anymore. We we want to, you know, we, we want to put it to a vote to end the war. Because this war is doing nothing but killing people and causing massive, massive pain across the galaxy. And we brought it to the Senate and the Chancellor wouldn't bring it to a vote. He wouldn't allow it to take the floor. And it's like, that's the kind of thing that you gotta, like, speak up about in the moment. Like, because I feel like you could have saved a lot of pain, too, if you were like, hey, look, we brought this to the floor. Like, that's the thing, is that it's like, I think that 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 was something that kind of bothered me, because I'm like, they have hollow news in Star Wars. Like, they have the press. 
Like, it's not like Star Wars doesn't have the press, because there is news. Like, that's something that they say. It's really in the expanded universe in the movies, they don't want to talk about it, but there is news. And I think in the shows, too, they mention, like, news sources and stuff like that. Um, and I think that that's the kind of thing where, like, you, you could have come forward and been like, oh, by the way, this terrible war that no one likes uh, being a part of, both sides want to end it, but the Chancellor won't let it. Like, it, it's, it's not unrealistic to reality, let's be honest, but I, I think that, like, that's the kind of thing where it's like, you know, you, you do that, you have public pressure mounting, and, and, and I don't know. It, 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 like, it's a cool idea, but then you think about it for, like, six seconds, you're like, no, wait. No, no, like, a bunch of senators came together and did this, and a single person brought it, like, went to, like, leaked it to the media, because, like, that's the thing. You know what I want to see? I want to see, like, the the Star Wars equivalent of, like, you know, the West Wing. That'd be cool. Anyway, um, besides that, the episode's pretty cool. I, I had uh, very little to do with um, the Bad Backs themselves. This is more about Cody and Crosshair and, and what the Empire's doing. And I do enjoy that aspect of it. Um... But I do like expanding the world, and I think that that's one of my favorite parts is that expanding not just the world, but the geopolitical implications of the world and everything else that's going on in the broader galaxy. All of these things really work to the advantage of the show most of the time. And I think that this is another one of those examples where it's like, we're going to take a minute, we're going to make sure everyone, you know, we're going to, we can go out of our way to make sure that the, show, that the, uh, the world is, you know, Expect it out in a way that makes sense, where it's like we're watching, you know, why is the Empire the way that it is, what happened to cause the Empire to hit this point, all these things need to be properly laid out and explained, and I think this episode does a great job of really exploring that further, and really, all this show really is, is a lengthy retcon of Lucas making the Stormtroopers clones, because, like, that was the thing that really irked a lot of people about the prequels before, you know, they started changing things more recently, was that the prequels, um, kind of established that the Stormtroopers were not soldiers, because that's one of the things that, like, as part of the sanitization of Star Wars that we say happened under Disney, but really began under Lucas, it's this idea that, like, we're going to take some of the teeth out of the war, where it's like... Luke and Leia are not killing soldiers who are there fighting for whatever VA benefits the Empire offers. Um, they're there to, you know, they're there to do killing clones. They're not really people, they're clones, and we get into the personhood argument. And I think that that was kind of the start of it, was in the Clone Wars, where it's like, oh, the clones have distinct personalities. They're not just a two army of two billion clones or two million clones. They have distinct personalities, and they're all they're all their own person. And that was like the first big step to be like, oh, so there there is more to this, um, and, and there is more going on here. Um, there's that, and then there's also the expansion of like then this kind of concretely retcons. Like Camino is destroyed. We're moving on from Camino. Here is. You know, we, we now have conscripts in this army. Um, and, you know, I feel like that's kind of something that, that you know, that this is kind of the, the true version of getting us back to what it was in, in 1977. Um, I just feel like there, there's, there are some things that could have been done better um, along the way, but I, I think this show is doing a pretty good job as it is right now, just kind of laying out the world and, um, and, and really expanding it in meaningful ways and giving us cool new depth, uh, political, socio-political th- uh, depth that's going to improve on our understanding of how the world works. Um, and it's the kind of thing where it's like in other shows done more poorly, I probably would not like this. I probably would be like, oh, well, um, 
I don't like, like, I, I'm not a fan of how they're handling this. I'm like, it, it's just being done so well, where it's like, this is a small pocket that is almost explicitly designed to, to expand, to, to tell us a story. Not the story of, you know, what the clones are doing specifically, I mean, the, the broader story of, um, what's it called? The, the broader story of what the, uh, what the world is, uh, and how it works. Um, but we'll wrap up there for today. So, The Bad Batch is on Disney+. Plus. Um, tomorrow we'll do Willow. I'm not looking forward to this. Um, I'm just happy that I will probably not have to ever talk about Willow again after this, because I do not want to ever think about this show ever again. Um, that will be tomorrow morning. Uh, tomorrow evening, we'll be doing A Man Called Otto. Um, Saturday morning, we'll be recording a new episode of Exploring Hyperspace Lane, Josie and I. Um, I think we're going to do Velma on, in the, uh, I'm going to do Velma in the morning. Because the new, the first episode premiered today. And that'll go for ten weeks. And then Velma followed by, um, Sunday we're going to do, um, what was that other show? Um, the one with, uh, fuck, what's her name? Um, Catherine Jada Jones is in it. Um, what's the name of that show? It, uh, it, oh, National Treasure, that's it. Um, and then, uh, also on Saturday, we're also going to do Plane, the new Gerard Butler movie, where. He has a plane, and he needs to rescue people, because his plane went down, and they've all been kidnapped, and the movie's just called Plane, which indicates to me that, like, they got through, like, some of the, like, they, they didn't bother to change the name on the document, and they're like, you know, just, someone's like, spec script plane, and they're like, well, drop the spec script part of it, and then we will, like, so, it feels like a screamer, I was like, let's do a movie with Gerard Butler and a plane, and then they, they came up with that, and then they wrote the script, and it just says, like, Gerard Butler plane movie, and they're like, we'll cut the movie, and cut Gerard Butler, we'll call it plane while we're in production, and we'll eventually change the name, and then we'll go from there, and then everyone just has, like, All right, well, the movie's called Plane, so let's just keep it like that, and now we have a movie called Plane, um, and that comes out tomorrow, I'm seeing it Saturday, um, and then next week we have a new Exploring Hyperspace Lands episode. We have a new episode of Beware of, Sport, of 30 Minute Reviews about um, searching the prequel, I guess, to... I think it's the prequel. I don't know if they're connected in any way, but it's the same style movie um, of, uh, of Missing, which comes out next week. And, yeah. Um, we will wrap up there for today. Um, so, until our next episode... Have a great rest of your week.